Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, lover of Asian sunscreens. And I feel like I do a lot of talk about Korean sunscreens and that's my tea. But I love Japanese sunscreens too. I just feel like there's not a lot of Japanese skincare brands, especially ones that just launch sunscreens crazy like that. I digress. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of, I think arguably the biggest Japanese sunscreen brands, Biore. I feel like in the last six to nine months, they've really launched a good handful of really fun sunscreens. They launched their Aqua Rich Lotion last summer. And then this came with a specific technology. I think it's called like their Aqua Capsule, but they took that technology and they incorporated it into their Aqua Rich Lotion line. So we have reformulations of their super hot, super popular, super viral aqua rich watery essence, as well as their aqua rich watery gel. And then on top of that, they launched a sunscreen mist. So we're going to talk about it today. So since this addresses pretty much every sunscreen we're going to talk about, let's talk about that aqua, aqua. Let's talk about that aqua capsule technology. So my understanding is that, again, this is my understanding right now. They reformulated both of those sunscreens to feature the aqua capsule technology. What that means is that the UV filter are apparently encapsulated and I'll have the press release from Cal, the parent company of Biore in the description box if you wanna read it. But the UV filters are encapsulated and what happens is when you apply sheer stress, AKA you rub it, the capsules break and the two benefits you get from that are rich hydration as well as essentially it helps to form a more even and therefore more robust film of protection on the skin, which means better UV coverage for the individual wearing it. And also I don't work for Cal, I don't work for Biore. Also I bought these myself. So not sponsored, not an ad, not PR. I showed my coworkers this formula and the products and they are under the assumption that the encapsulation is based off a dextrose or dextrin. If you're into that information, there's that. Looking at the overall information for the Biore sunscreens, basically they have that water capsule technology as well as humectants that help to really hydrate the skin. These are all super waterproof, which means they are 80 minutes water and sweat resistant in America, translation. They're also specifically formulated at least the watery ones to be uh, really good for acne prone skin. And with the Aqua Capsules technology, it helps to prevent uneven application on a microscopic level. Again, that film forming ability of a sunscreen, especially being able to form a very robust film of protection is a very important factor in attaining higher levels of SPF and better UV protection overall. Also, even though these all have robust heavy duty protection, the big thing with Biore sunscreens is that they are also still very easy to wash off with just soap and water. So yeah, with the general information out of the way, let's get into the individual sunscreen reviews. Depending on which sunscreen you wanna see the review of, whether it's the watery essence, the watery gel, or the mist. I'll have timestamps for those down below. And since they're all chemical sunscreens, I'm gonna be using my 6F testing rubric where I talk about the feel, finish, filters, formulation, foundation, wear, and fragrance. So you can fast forward to whichever part you wanna see. Okay, so let's start with the watery essence. This is the girl. This is like one of the first viral sunscreens I remember using. Like the 2018, 2019 versions of this were stellar. And now we're at the 2023 version of this, I guess. So looking at the marketing of this, this updated version of Biore's UV Aqua Rich Watery Essence comes in a more user-friendly packaging that features a flip top cap. I think the other one was like a twist cap. It boasts SPF 50 plus, PA 4 plus, ultra light sun essence forms a waterproof shield on the skin to fend off UV rays without leaving a white cast or sticky after feel. Hyaluronic acid and royal jelly extract keep skin comfortable and hydrated. Application footage of this, you can see it comes out. It is a gel, gel sunscreen. If you're America based, it's very reminiscent of the Neutrogena Hydro Boost line, like a very aqua gel texture. Melts into the skin, like instantly melts into the skin. It feels like a nice hydrating moisturizer. It is very, very lightweight. As you can see on the finish, it leaves a subtle glow. This is by no means matte. If you want a matte sunscreen and you want Biore, their Athleism line is the route to go. This is the mist from that line. I like their, I think it's the Essence version as well. That's very similar to this, but basically more alcohol content, much more matte finish. This leaves a natural to like radiant glow on the skin. You look moisturized. You're not matte. Your skin looks juicy. For the filters in this, it uses octanoxate, even T150, even A+, and Tinosorb S for the SPF 50 PA4 plus protection. As I mentioned earlier, this is water and sweat resistant for up to 80 minutes, AKA super waterproof in Japanese sunscreen terms. And for formulation, overall, these are very simple formulas for all of these. I'm surprised they don't have more antioxidants, more soothing ingredients, because I feel like with Korean sunscreens, that's like the default, the norm. But this does use glycerin, 
arginine. Arginine is an amino acid that also acts as a natural moisturizing factor. It also has sodium hyaluronate, royal jelly extract, xylitol, which is like a sugar. Sugars are really good humectants in cosmetics. Butylene glycol. This does feature ethanol. This does have alcohol in it. That's like what these are very well known for. And it does have fragrance with the alcohol. What I will say is, and I have videos about this. I'll have cards up here. Alcohol in sunscreens helps to do a lot of things, but specifically it's in Japanese sunscreens, it helps to make formulas very elegant because it dissipates very quickly. As a result of that, it helps to create a lighter skin feel. And especially in a product like this, which is ultra hydrating and moisturizing, I never worry about any negative repercussions from alcohol in my cosmetics. For a foundation wear, this is one of the best sunscreens because it feels so light. It's literally like a second skin. It's super hydrating, so your skin is adequately prepped for makeup. This is an amazing primer for makeup. Plus, this is one of my favorites as a reapplicator over makeup because the gel is such a lightweight texture. You will have to powder a little bit if you don't want a glowy finish, but again, this is not greasy. It's just glowy. There's uh, Those are two very different worlds in my mind. And then for fragrance, because it does have fragrance. To me, it's not an issue. I smell more of the ethanol, if anything. Yeah, it smells like a fresh scent, but then there's more ethanol to it in my mind. But it's not an issue. It doesn't linger. It dissipates very, very quickly. I don't mind it. I'm not sensitive to it. Also, I did not experience any eye stinging with this one. So do note that. Oh, also, so two factors compared to the original. I believe they upgraded the size for this one. This one is now 70 grams. I believe the last one was 50 grams. And honestly, I can't tell a difference between the textures. They feel very, very similar to me. So that's also a plus if you love the original. This one is definitely worth checking out. So now let's talk about its sister product. This is the Y watery sun gel. So I got a lot to say about this one. So marketing on this updated version of the watery gel, more user-friendly packaging that offers a comfortable grip and then a twist cap. But I feel like the other one did have a twist cap as well. SPF 50 plus, super powerful, waterproof and non-sticky, no white cast, which we'll get to. Hyaluronic acid, royal jelly extract, blah, 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 blah. So feel of this, very different texture. This is more of a milky sunscreen, which you can see right here. Well, no, okay, I lied. It's kind of like a milky gel sunscreen. It still has a gel quality to it, but it feels like it has like a milky sunscreen texture. So it's like a hybrid texture. I will say it's very light on the skin. It works in easily. If you can look on the screen, you'll see at one point it like low-key congeals on my skin, but that works away really quickly. So that's not a, a concern overall. I was worried at first, but it doesn't pill. It just has this weird texture at first where it looks like it's like congealing on the skin and then it just works in really easily. So it does feel lightweight. It does feel very hydrating on the skin. The finish of it, it's still glowy. So it's again, not modifying. And so it's in that regard, very similar to the watery essence. For filters in this, this is where we get into a little bit of a different territory. So it does still feature octanoxate, evenol T150, evenol A+, and Tinosorb S. But this also features titanium dioxide, which is a very interesting touch. And so that's why I made a comment about that white cast situation earlier. Truth be told, and I remember back in the day when I was in Chicago, first starting out content creating, and I was talking about sunscreens initially, I knew I loved this. My my boyfriend, oh, at that point, he's we're married now. He also loved this. And then one day we're shopping and we see this and we think it's the same thing because we didn't realize there was two versions and the names were different. We stocked up on this only to find out it had titanium dioxide. And that version, which again, is like the 2019 version, it was casty. It was arguably very casty. This version, I will say, works in well. I didn't have the same issue to the same level. I will say I did have to work a little bit harder just to make sure it was blended up in my hairline. I don't know if in the application footage you noticed that at all. But just know if you have tan, dark, deep skin, this is potentially going to cause a cast on you. I've already posted the reviews for both of these on Instagram and I had a lot of comments talking about the cast on this for not even very deep skin, not even very dark skin. Like it could be casty. So just note that. But aside from that, formulation wise, a lot of the same ingredients. You see glycerin, arginine, sodium hyaluronate, royal jelly. This one specifically also has glutamic acid up in the mix, which the other one doesn't. Xylitol, butylene glycol. This does also feature ethanol, which again, lighter texture, helps to set more quickly. And it does have fragrance as well. Well, so do note that and honestly, same fragrance experience as the other one. The ethanol overpowers the fresh a little bit, but then both of those dissipate very quickly. Foundation wear, again, it had the congealy situation, which made me very worried, but overall this actually wears well under makeup. I wouldn't reapply this over makeup though. Definitely the watery essence is the girl for that one. My comments on this uh, compared to the original is this is less casty, but also they made this one smaller. This one is now 70 mil. I believe the old one was 90 mil, but don't quote me on that. I do know they made this smaller though. I was like, what's the point of this? This is the superior 
superior version and arguably this is leaps and bounds better and the main difference is that this one has a titanium in the cosmetic chemist world titanium dioxide is an amazing ingredient for boosting spf value because it's a great uvb absorber so a lot of times if you want to increase the spf value of a sunscreen titanium dioxide is the route to go and so i was like but both of these are spf 50 plus pe4 plus this one makes no claims as to having an even more higher protection value or whatever people in the comments on instagram were like in japanese skincare world gel in the sunscreen name apparently alludes to body specific formulas both of these say great for face and body so apparently this is more intended for body use that being said if that's the case why did they downgrade the packaging size make it make sense um but yeah this one is kind of like okay if you want that especially for the titanium dioxide value worth getting this one to me is still the goat if you want this experience you still want titanium dioxide but you want them alcohol free the can make sunscreen the clear one is the way to go i believe the can make clear sunscreen is ethanol free if i'm incorrect let me know in the comment section so now let's get into the mist so this isn't necessarily in the same product family as this one is it exists in the same family as the aqua rich aqua protect lotion because it's the aqua rich aqua protect mist but it's still under the aqua rich line so it's in this video i was so hyped when i saw this because i was like obr is like that girl when it comes to sunscreen products this has to be amazing so i swiftly put this in my basket looking at the marketing for this this hydrating sunscreen comes with spf 50 plus pa4 plus protection sorry no spf 50 no plus pa4 plus protection and in a refreshing mist formula that absorbs instantly into the skin great for those with on-the-go lifestyles the waterproof product can be used on both face and body i'm going to read a few product details off of yes style just so we're on the same page fog like mist that dries quickly and adheres to the skin evenly anytime anywhere full body quick protection momentary mist uv non-gas mist type meaning it's not aerosol it's just a regular face mist convenient for quick uv protection even when you're out protects your skin moisture every time you bathe and keeps your skin moist and glossy i guess that means water resistant part um it says it's super waterproof so 80 minutes water and sweat resistant for face and body also for hair interesting and then it says for how to use spray in appropriate mounts 10 to 15 centimeters from the face let it absorb apply evenly to prevent uneven and <laughs> apply evenly to prevent unevenness also my thing with you ugh, i hate when they do this when using it on the face dispense it into the palm of your hand and apply it little by little i'm not doing all that i'm missing it on my face i think brands say that as a liability thing because why are you going to call this well this one specifically a protect mist i've seen a lot of ones that literally say face mist on the packaging then say this in the instructions i'm pretty sure it's just a liability thing and then one thing that they say that it's definitely worth noting Noting is make sure when you're pressing the thing to press down all the way i'll get to that in a bit okay so getting into the six f's the feel of this it's it, it's i don't know if you can see it it's a watery mist it's a very light watery texture when you spray it it's also a very fine mist i really can't complain about the mist quality itself it's a very nice mister situation and it feels lightweight on the skin the finish of this as you can see on the screen that's not matte it's not even natural that is glowy and i'll get to a little bit of that when i get to the formulation portion of this but yeah i you know was a little bit disappointed because the finish of it is very radiant and even after 10 15 minutes of waiting it doesn't really set down to a natural finish at all it stays glowy for filters it uses octanoxate even a plus even t150 polysilicone 15 and Tina sort of S. They added a little extra filter up in there. Only reason I can think is that potentially just due to the lack of a full system of emollients and emulsifiers and all that, you need a little bit of something extra to give an SPF boost. So that's probably why. For formulation, so the other things besides UV filters, first of all, I just want to say ethanol is the first ingredient up in there. I do not know a concentration. All I will say is that I believe octanoxate can only be used up to 20% in Japanese cosmetics and ethanol is still in front of octanoxate. Do with that information what you will. But this also features the methicones, emollient esters, it has squalane in there as like the primary skincare, skincare ingredient. And then this does also feature fragrance. So it has a high amount of ethanol and it has fragrance in it, but the smell is very fresh. I actually feel like I actually smell the fragrance more than the ethanol in this product. But when you're missing this on the face, especially to wear the adequate amount, you're just like enveloped by this air, this cloud of ethanol and fragrance and you're, you can't breathe. I will say you don't breathe. But yeah, with the dimethicone and the esters and all that, that's where you're getting that shine from. It's it's still very lightweight on the skin. I will give you that. It has kind of like a dry oil texture on the skin, if I'm being very honest. But yeah, that's where that shine is coming from. And even the esters in there, they're not necessarily volatile esters that evaporate quickly. Like they're emollients. For foundation wear, so I actually have it on, but I heavily powdered. It leaves you shiny. And even after 15 minutes, like I mentioned, you're going to stay shiny. I did powder, which you can see on screen, and it takes the shine away very easily. And I'm not going in heavy with the powder. I'm like lightly dusting. So that's definitely a positive. But I think a negative, slight negative, is that I 
do feel like it oxidized my foundation a little bit. Like my foundation went up like a little half step and I was like, like these are not the same color anymore. So <laughs> half the time they never are anyways, but I will confirm. I think it is the sunscreen mist itself. So that's definitely a con, but I mean, if you like a glowy finish or you're someone who will carry powder on with you, I think this is a really good option to reapply. If anyone's wondering for the application of this, I use my little scale and measuring spoon. I measured about 10 spritzes is about enough for my face. So when I do the face, I do 11 or 12 and I just make sure my face is fully saturated. But yeah, this was interesting, slightly disappointed, but realistically this really plays into every other SPF mist I've really used. Very similar qualities, similar finishes, similar user experience. What I will say though is this is, this right now is about $12 and you get 60 mil. So to me, that's a decent price. I can't tell you how quickly you would go through this bottle if you're reapplying once, twice a day. I'm right here right now and I've used this, I think four or five times. So do with that information what you will. But yes, that is some newness from Biore, which is really fun. I love seeing newness, new launches, reformulations from Japanese brands. I feel like Biore is notorious for reformulating their sunscreens every few years, but I'm not mad at it, especially because I feel like Cow, their parent company, does do a lot of innovation. Super exciting. And I love the aqua capsule technology they have in this conceptually, just because it's cool that they're still able to keep a very elegant, lightweight texture, but really ensure that film is going to be a lot more robust, a lot more sturdy, and thus ensuring you're getting really, really good UV protection. Let me know down below in the comment section, have you used the new reformulations of these two or have you tried the new mist? What are your opinions and your thoughts on those? I'd love to hear what you guys think, especially if you had a different experience than me. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and Fenty related content on my channel. Give the video a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.